now we're recording now we're on no shit. um so this is no not preparation yeah no preparation <laughs> this is not this is not a work i did not realize this when i picked purchased this particular can of coke bottle of coke but it says to share it with kelly so um i don't know I uh, do you want to actually cue everyone in kelly's the name of my wife by the way for any, anyone who has no fucking idea what my life is like <laughs> Cheers to Kelly. Probably... Thank you. We run it live. We run it live. Um, God, we really do zero preparation for this. I don't even know what we're talking about today. Yeah, but it's, it's in the list. Uh, uh, dude, I, have we not <laughs> talked about this? When I said, hey, yeah, I'd totally be down for doing this. The whole stipulation, as I stated in episode zero, was that I'd show up and I'd yell into the void. That includes not looking to see what the fuck we're going to talk about. Right, I well, like I like coming in fresh and clean. All right. Well, this one this one's going to be a good one. Um, well, hang on a second before you do that. Are, are we getting into what, what? Jamie, what are you geeking at this? Oh week? no, we're we're going to introduce ourselves and stuff. Oh fuck! No, like, why? I don't know. I mean, I I, tell tell everybody who you are. I'm I'm Shit. Jamie Noguchi. I'm Brandon Chalmers. Okay, there we go. That that's our intro. Awesome. Okay, right. yeah. It, you know Jamie from fucking everything because he's incredible. You probably know me from Art Fight and being near Jamie. So that's <laughs> that's essentially how it is. I I you know I, I live in a Jamie centrist universe. I I am but a moon that circles your gravitational pull, Jamie. Oh, Jamie. it's a very small, tiny moon. Unless I'm eating a lot of beef, then it. I was gonna expands. say, says you. I'm a pretty big ass moon. So. <laughs> Um, I'm fucking Titan over here. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I apologize in advance. Uh, allergies kick my ass every season, and for some reason, these past couple of days, it's kind of knocking me out. So, I'm, if I cough, uh, we have isolated audio tracks. So, uh, if it gets real bad, I'll, I'll just cut it when I start hacking. Um, <laughs> but fuck. Um, so yeah, uh, what are you geeking on, Brandon? Uh, so I was a little unsure of what I should be getting into. So uh, realistically, what I'm really geeking out on is something that I don't actually have yet. And it's fucking driving me nuts. So is it the sorry? Destiny expansion that's dropping in September? No, because it's <laughs> September and I can't be prepped. Jamie Noguchi, if you haven't understood yet, I'm the kind of guy who doesn't watch movie trailers mm. and doesn't get hyped about video games. Okay. Tell me about the thing. Okay. I'm into the thing. When it shows up, I'll play the thing, I'll buy the thing, I'll go do the thing. I don't need fucking like eight months of selling me on the thing. Like I, I've always been a guy where, give me the elevator pitch. If you can get me in about 20 seconds, I'm in. Otherwise, I'll let somebody else see it that I trust and they'll go, it's fucking rad or it's terrible and then we're done. I'm good. I don't need to go back to it. We're fine. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. So. The thing I'm excited about is something that I don't physically have yet. So what I ended up doing was I, uh, you know, on, on Twitter, I subscribed to a, a feed called Carryology. It's also tied to a website called Carryology. And what they do are basically bag and gear reviews. If you know me, you know that I fucking love bags and backpacks and uh, preparation. And so carrying like shit. Carry, Carryology. Carry, I was like, is this yes. dedicated to the movie with like... No, 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 not, not, not the movie, not Carrie Fisher. No, this is for physically carrying things. So, okay, okay. um, if, if you ever want to get nerdy with me about the bag I carry and what my everyday carry setup is and all that other stuff, I am one of those guys. Um, but in turn, what they ended up putting me on was a, a review by a dude who reviewed, uh, the best longboard bags. Ooh. And I've been thinking about getting into hopping on a longboard as a way to just kind of chill out and get around because where i live um is a suburb of baltimore county and no on the street jamie oh not, oh, not, oh. Not i don't live that close to water to get in, into that <laughs> i mean um, when it floods um, again you will so <laughs> right but in turn like i have a lot of stores that are right near where i am that i could take a quick jaunt out 
and go and pick up a few things and then ride back home. So I've been thinking about picking up a longboard for a while. Okay. Um, it says poor internet connection, by the way. So if this sounds bad, I apologize. Um, so what I ended up doing was seeing a review for longboard bags. Well, I didn't really care about the bags. What I saw was a review for his favorite longboard and his favorite gear. Ooh. So I ended up getting put on to this longboard by a company called Beer Can Boards. And what they are are recycled aluminum longboards. Oh, nice. No more wood that'll snap and break over time. No warping, yeah. nothing. Fucking long-term shit. No graphics on the bottom. All they do are like special die cut the grip tape up on top. So if you want a custom design, they'll powder coat the board a specific color and then put your grip tape as certain colors or you can just get a clean one. Um, and then what I am what I plan on doing is I just got a clean aluminum one, uh, powder coated silver. I'm gonna sticker bomb the fuck out of the bottom of it. Nice. It's gonna kind of be my, my, my thing. So because of this, they're a small company out of Georgia and they take a little time to build things, and I'm a little frustrated. And for the record, they made it all right. They communicated with me. They sent me tracking today. I placed the order last Monday. Their policy was like, we ship boards within one business day. I'm like, fuck, rat, <laughs> awesome, I'll have it by the weekend. No. One day turned into two, two into four. I, I get a hold of them through the middle of the week. They're like, hey, we're making your board. And I'm like, I'm, I didn't get a custom board, but all right, that's fine, whatever. And then I follow up two days later. I was like, hey, any updates on my board? And they're like, yeah, it's going to go out Monday. And I'm like, okay, fine. that That's fine. So in turn, I have a vacation coming up. Ooh. It'll be in Ocean City, Maryland. And Ocean City, if you've ever been, uh, is completely flat. It's mm -hmm. about five miles, and it is perfectly pristine roads because it is like one of those planned vacation towns they keep an eye on all that shit so it is going to be basically the perfect place for me to go ripping around in but i want to make sure i get the thing before i go away so that i don't bust my shit in the middle of coastal highway yeah man yeah so i ended up getting a new helmet for it and i got some special gloves with some special sliders uh to make sure that i don't catch my wrists on anything so like i'm stoked to get the thing in i think it'll be here wednesday or thursday so mm -hmm. Prepare for me to end up, like, absolutely wrecked before next weekend. Nah, but, fuck it. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm stoked about that. And then, of course, the second I bought the board because the internet watches you, I started getting all of these ads for all of this longboard stuff. And in turn, some asshole has actually made, like, a gigantic pole with a rubber stopper on the bottom. <laughs> they actually do, like, the paddleboarding thing on the street. And I know me. I'll get into this, and then I'll end up buying that thing and looking like a dick as I paddleboard my way to Target. Fuck and it. And then end up carrying around a metal skateboard and a gigantic pole like some sort of idiot. And then I'm going to need a special bag to carry the thing. No, you got you to gotta use your old, man. You got to use your old properly. So, like, be that guy. Be the dude that, with the fucking... Bro. Well, and that's, and that's the thing. Like, I, I, I make no 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 pretenses or, or pretending or anything else like that. I will not be carving up the mountains. I'm not going to be, you know, tearing up a pool or anything else like that. I specifically bought the one. If you're looking on the website, I got the hard cider model. Um, <laughs> they, the whole thing is kind of based off of alcohol or sodas or whatever it is. So this one's designed to be wider and slower than some of the others. They have ones for, like, bombing down hills um, but also the entry point is relatively cheap. Hmm. Like, honestly, I, I don't mind saying it. I was looking at boards on Amazon for 50 bucks and a hundred bucks. And I had looked at some of the, those skate shops and like a nice proper wooden one is, you know, it can be upwards three, four hundred dollars. Yeah. So I managed to get this one, uh, shipped for free when it actually ships, um, uh, for 170. That's really good actually. So like, as far as. I plan on having it for a while. They're rated really well. The reviews have been really, really good. And it's long-term and it's metal. So long as I basically take care of it and I don't, like, completely wreck my shit, it should hold up for a while, which means it's somewhere in the lower end of the price point in between the super nice ones and the cheap Amazon ones. And you can get them custom made for an additional, like, I think, 30 bucks or something like that. You can get all the custom grip tape and everything. So, like, it's all relatively reasonable. And you can get it even cheaper than that if you wanted to get one that was, like, smaller or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. the other part is if you're a bigger dude like myself 
it's rated for higher weights. I think the the their top of the line model has a weight capacity of like four hundred and fifty pounds. Jesus. So ain't no fucking excuses for being a big ass and, yeah. and carving yourself down the street or whatever it is. So like I'm I'm super stoked about it. So I'm basically like waiting at my email just for like I want tracking numbers, I want to did see the come, thing. Did it come, did it come. <laughs> Christmas. I'm such a child when it comes to buying the thing. Fuck I don't dude. have many vices. I'm bad when it comes to I want the thing and I want it right the fuck now. Yeah. I am super guilty of get, that. Get the gear, man. Get the gear. You got to get it in. Yeah. So that's that, awesome. That, that's what I'm stoked about. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about something I have. I'm stoked about the idea of having the thing. That sounds fun. That sounds yeah. fun as shit. Man. I, I never got into skating growing up just because it just wasn't a thing. So I yeah. would probably bust my ass now. <laughs> I, I, that's what I'm hoping is that like because it's it's longboarding and it's designed to just kind of be flatland or maybe like slight hills. Um, I'm not getting into this. Like you can get super hardcore with this shit where like there's full face helmets oh and God. like gloves with like hockey puck style protectors where you can get way down and grind the sides and all sorts of – I'm not getting in. Yeah, this in is strictly delightful. <laughs> yeah, this is like, hey, I need to go get like lunch meat and some dog bones. I'm gonna go run to Target, which is like half a mile from my house, <laughs> and then hop on my longboard and then go zipping down there. Like, please do not. I, I'm not gonna pretend that it's gonna be something more than what it is. Now, I will say, once I get it, and I'm actually not gonna end up busting my shit. I feel confident about it. I want to get a skate crew together. <laughs> nice. Well, I'll be the rollerblade douchebag. That's uh, fine. Because I, I want to live my uh, uh, Jet Set Radio <laughs> cosplay. Dude, I, I have been thinking about the longest times before I pulled the trigger on this, getting a pair of quads because I want to be that guy. And yeah, like, it, <laughs> yeah. Long, long internal strife about should I join a men's roller derby team? <laughs> Well, bam! Well, bam! Man, drop them both. So, what are you? What are you geeking about? All right, so um, I am a big fan of Gunpla, which is Gundam plastic models. Okay. And um, there, a couple of years ago, there was this show that they did called Gundam Build Fighters. Basically, it is a half-hour commercial for the hobby of building Gundam models. <laughs> Not that. The series Wait. itself is not a commercial. I mean, it is essentially a half an hour. Are, are, is this live action with people or no, no, no. animated? It's animated. So this is all animated. So it's drawings of the models. <laughs> it's draw. It's it's kids who um, build these models, and okay. in it's called Build Fighters because in this universe, there is the build fight system. So you build your model, you hit, you hook it up to this uh, device, and that that animates the actual model so you can fight other people your gundam kit turns alive and, and you fight other models okay so like kind of kind of pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, but more of like a real world amiibo setup or yeah. whatever it is yeah so imagine your amiibo instead of putting a virtual character into a video game the amiibo itself started running around and punching shit and so okay. that that was the premise of this um this this gundam series which is Strange for Gundam because Gundam is like real world, like war anime. It's it's known as like the real the the beginning of the real robot genre, where like instead of robots just running around and punching things, you have a driver and a pilot who has to actually figure out how to pilot the fucking mech before gotcha. it can even move an arm. So this is a a huge departure away from the core values of the the Gundam franchise <laughs> in, in the effort to sell you model kits and. The the fun the fun thing about the show is if you're in into Gundam like the series the kids in the show are also way into Gundam so they don't just build the stock model they take the stock model and they add on different variations to it or do con custom paint jobs and okay. the, and the idea is that if you build your kit with love and if you build your kit better than the other guy your kit will perform better in the Gundam build fighter system so like how it because okay. <clears throat> because of the anime MacGuffin thing. Anyway, okay. it's it's free on YouTube. Um, so like 
the the Gundam official channel, they have the first season of Gundam Build Fighters. They have the second season, which instead of uh, teams of two, it was teams of three. So there are three kids um, that got together to build these kits and then to put them into the system. And now they're in the third season and it's called Gundam Build Divers. And this is much more of a... Um, the the game is now no longer a thing where the the robots actually where your model kits become alive the model kits get scanned in and then it's much like the amiibo they get stuck into this virtual world so the characters are building their um they're essentially their fire team and they uh face off against other teams of of people who've built these gundam kits and uh they customize them and they do all this sort of shit and and of course, they sell they sell the Gundam kits that they uh, they build what? on the show. So no. like you could you could be a hardcore hipster douchebag and get the base kit, and then try to kit bash other kits to make it look like the the new version that they have in the in the show. Or you just buy the the, the Gundam that's from the show. Um, so it's it's I I have it, this is not a series for like people who have no experience with Gundam. Like, you have to be way into Gundam to, like, get all the in-jokes and all the stuff, and you have to really like making model kits for you to even give a shit about what any of these characters are doing. It's, like, the most meta show I've ever seen from an anime, and I fucking love every dumb fuck minute of it. It's, it's like... Well- isn't it is it is it more because it's good or is it more because you attach a personal connection to it because of your experience with your daughter? Um it, it's mostly because I I don't know. I don't it's hard for me to I don't it, it's hard to I say. Cuz I mean like you you have always been a pusher of Gundam models. You enjoy them yourself. Right. I know you and your daughter experience time together where you build together and she's has a whole series of them. I've seen them. They're freaking adorable. Yeah. All the bears and all the, the cool shit. Oh yeah. So like, they got I'm, these, I'm, I, these I yeah. guys, these horrors now. Oh yeah. The little horrors. Yeah. So I could see where your history of it, one, your love of the genre two, and then a new personal attachment of like, kids getting into this and my kids getting into this so like i can totally see my kid doing the thing with the thing okay cool so i guess it's more of the fact that like i want to i want to actually i love the idea of an mmo where you physically build your character in the in the real world scan it in and have it interact with other stuff like if destiny had a system where you know, you could, you buy your base guardian and then you paint it up and then do all this customization on the outside world and then stick it into the system and then build it that way. And then like, you know, in their, in their stupid MMO, their Gundam MMO, you can buy a house to hang out with your friends and stuff. So like you can customize your house with Gundam dumb shit and you can have like different uniforms and different colors and all this kind of stupid thing. So it's like, it, it touches on things that I'm, tangentially interested in like I, i've never played a real mmo before like destiny is my first kind of um interaction with that type of game and i would love i love the idea of like playing with your friends online and building gundams online and doing all this dumb shit basically they're forming raid teams but instead of killing stuff they're hanging out with each other <laughs> okay um, but yeah, it's uh, it's 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 essentially a commercial for building model kits, and well, I have way too many model kits already. So, <laughs> you know. so it's so it's obviously working though. It's working, yes. <laughs> All right, so this week's topic is probably going to be a long one because. Uh, we are both <laughs> stupid idiots about this shit. Okay. Wrestling. We are going to oh, talk shit. about wrestling. Okay. And I, what, half our audience already just checked out. Right, right, right. So. And, I, and I figure the way we should structure this. And so our whenever we – our goal for this show is to come up with dumb ideas and to, to pitch them and massage them so that they work into something that's workable. Wrestling yeah. is already out there. Wrestling is pretty big these days. Yeah. Um, WWE is definitely like the big – man on campus but there are other promotions out there that are coming up like um uh new japan is getting a lot of attraction ring of honor um northeast wrestling we have personal connection to that but i don't give a shit i'm gonna plug it as much as i fucking can 
So yep. the way I thought we would structure it is you and I book a show and this okay. would be the show to end all shows. Like this the, this would be You the, and I are not prepared to book this show. You do know that, right? Because I, I know that. Our knowledge of New Japan is minimal at best. That's so true. like That's true. already people are going to start bitching cuz it's it's wrestling fandom. So right, they're right. already going to start picking us apart. They're also going to be like, there's a dude in Virginia who's fucking amazing, <laughs> and then he belongs to fight CM Punk. And then, uh, just, and, oh, and I hope they do, because that will get – if okay. that, if that gets us real-world heat on this dumb shit, that's fine. All but, right. but All like right. the – so the goals – the goals of – stipulation here. Yeah, the goals of this show, it's, it's going to be um, – we want – Three hours because five to seven is too fucking much. Okay, hang on a second. Realistically, how many matches are we talking? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how many. You, you matches. gotta, you gotta give me a realistic idea, Jamie. Like, if if you're talking three hours and half an hour matches, you talking squash matches? Like, I think worrying about the time is is secondary. Okay. Pick a number of actual matches here so we can put some fucking stipulations on this thing and tighten this bad boy up. Okay. Cuz we could be here fantasy booking for forever. <laughs> right. Unless we really get some some like tighten tighten tighten. Okay. Totally so like So what do you think? Do you think 8 matches? How eight? many How many matches are on a pay-per-view? I don't know. Like 14 cuz it's WWE and they do like 5 hours. So, right. so you want to pick 8? We want to pick we want to pick a reasonable number because we don't want this to go on all night. The all other right. the other thing we want to try to do is to bring in people who wouldn't necessarily watch wrestling. Like we want we want people to get excited about this. So any gimmick kind of match, like um, any celebrity that's tangentially involved with wrestling, like Rousey. I mean, if we think Rousey's good enough, we'll bring in a round of Rousey match and all that kind of stuff. But we want like. I don't know. We want we want people who aren't fans of wrestling to give a shit about this one big ass wrestling show. Okay. And then the other stipulation: um, anybody who's currently working in the biz. So we're not we're not necessarily talking about people who are retired or semi-retired. Like The Rock would definitely be like a celebrity get, but okay. he's he's not working. We're we're not we're not talking about putting Ric Flair in a match and we're not talking about right. bringing back dead people. So no yeah. macho man fantasy book. No macho and okay. even even though Sting is not dead, uh he's, he's practically dead. We're, is... we're not bringing back Sting. Okay. Um so the other thing I want to explain is that like when we talk about wrestling, people who listen to the show might not necessarily be familiar with the terms that we'll throw around. So we should try to like if we throw out a term that's like if this is a work and this is a shoot and that yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I think right out of the gate, um, unless okay, who's watching this show? Because you completely lost me the second you said you wanted to bring in people who aren't wrestling fans to watch wrestling. And here's the reason I say this. Okay, because. The New Japan roster, most of the Ring of Honor roster, most of the fantasy booking of like, this person's amazing in the ring, isn't actually going to draw anybody in. It may be something that they enjoy watching because they're physically very capable, but nobody gives a fuck unless it's the names that they actually recognize. So I asked that question because if you want to stand by that, that's fine. And that means that we head way more into the celebrity side of everything to put asses in seats a la like old school WrestleManias where, you know, it's all about the spectacle and less really about the matches themselves. Mm, that's a good so point. You, you, you know, we can have some barn burner style matches. You know, we could get into, you know, match number four or whatever it is, and that can be the one for whatever is, and we get our, you know, our ricochets and, and ospreys and, uh, you know, katas and blah, 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 blah. So, where are we going? Hmm, that's a good point. Well, I, um, I I don't dislike the idea. I just want to make it very clear that I, you're going to lose half of your New Japan roster, probably more than half, uh, if you're looking to get an American audience in the middle of the Midwest to actually watch this thing. Like I am, I am thinking like, you know. Iowa farm boys and right. smarks in 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 Brooklyn watching the same show. How do you draw everybody in? I I don't know if you're if you're your guys other than 
you know, your Kenny Omegas, your your Young Bucks or your Cody's or whatever it is are actually going to get them drawn in. Hmm. That's a good point. Um, where, where, and, and once again, we're just talking out of our asses on this stuff. So, like, it should be clear from this point. Um, where, where do you think our biggest draw for, like, the ultimate wrestling show would be? Like, w- what should our target audience be for this kind of thing? Like, uh, current fans or old fans who have left and want to come back? Or? I, I, I think you just, I, I, again, Jamie, I don't think you're wrong about your idea. That's the WWE model <laughs> is get everybody. I don't necessarily want super smarky douchebags. They're awful people. <laughs> I don't necessarily want old, decrepit, angry people. I'm one of them. They're awful people. Like, I can spot my own. Children are kind of terrible when it comes to wrestling, and they, they eat a lot of shit that they shouldn't be. Uh, super smarks in, in corners of the country, they're, they're awful. So, like, it's it's you, any fandom. You get too far into it, and shit gets real bad. You should, you should define what a smark is. Smart... Okay, so... Mark is a term for a wrestling fan. Smart Mark is somebody who understands how wrestling works, the back end of it, yada, yada, yada. So Smark is the term for smart wrestling fans. Smart, I use in quotation. (laughs) Basically, people who are really into wrestling that pay attention to the back end of it, the booking, the the one-on-one stuff, the communication, the storyline, the writing, the long-term things. You get more invested than just, I sit down and I watch... Raw and SmackDown and the pay-per-views and maybe a little of this and a little of this. If you're watching more than, I'd say, two types of wrestling product, you're probably a smart. If you're interested in the booking, you're probably a smart. If you're paying attention to who's friends with who on social media and paying attention to all the back and forth, you're probably a smart. Most people who watch wrestling at this point are varying degrees of smart. Does it, does it ever bother you that, like wrestling fans refer to themselves as marks like because that's a no. con term like con men yeah it's, it a, it's a it's an old carnival term I, yeah. here's the thing jamie i you and i watch something that is carny tricks at best we get excited about it and i've always viewed wrestling as an abusive relationship it really it's, is man it, it, we watch a ton of it and i'm talking there are hours of programming per week to try and catch minutes of great entertainment and we slog through the rest of it basically just making you know uh, catty comments at one another and at the product itself to push us through the bad times and we we idolize all the there's probably i'd say maybe a hundred great moments out of the 90s it's like the attitude era and we forget that there are hundreds upon hundreds of hours of entertainment yeah and we cherry pick those individual moments and we go it's the best time of wrestling ever and yeah. i love it because it's what we watched when we were of that age most likely like music like anything else like that what you're into between the ages of i'd say 17 and 23 are what you're into forever that's and true. you'll fight people for what you really like more than anything else we should also recognize that this is probably one of the most problematic things that we watch because wrestling has a long history of racism and misogyny and just like homophobia, homophobia and, and xenophobia. People. Yeah, still actively questionable people. Fucking Hulk Hogan. Um, I can't believe he got reinstated. Oh, to the I fucking totally Hulk. can't. Totally can't. I mean, I know, but I, I wish it weren't. <laughs> Just remember, Jamie, it takes seven years for a traffic violation to fall off, but Hulk Hogan can be racist and be back in three. Jesus, fuck, dude. Yep. All right, cool. All so right. Let's, so let's just mainstream, super mainstream, fly over states, people who've never seen it. Uh, someone who's watching this going, fucking get to the point and make the matches so that I can start <laughs> Googling people. All right, so what's, what's your, like, I, I, I need, who who do you want? Give me give me a name. Okay, um... Let's see. I'm I'm trying to think of. Do we go by who do we want, or do we go by the types of matches that we want? Fuck it. Just just give me a name. We'll come up with the matches. Let's let's fancy book. Just give me names, and we'll throw them together. I'm I got a pad and pen. I'm just writing down names. All right. I want my uh the I want adrenaline rush in there. Okay. All right. Uh, I want Northeast the wrestling own adrenaline rush. Yes. Uh, personal friend of Jamie Noguchi and I, Keith Youngblood. <laughs> uh, I want me some Young Bucks in there. Um. I want me some New Day because I feel like New Day has a chance of drawing in uh, outside wrestling fans. Okay. Um, I think an Omega, uh, Omega would be great. 
Uh, okay. Cody would be great. He'd be a great okay. draw. Um, I, Suzuki, because we need a crazy motherfucker who's going to eat bullets and glass and shit. Um, uh, we need a, we need a proper women's setup. Like so, we got Oscar. Uh, okay. I my knowledge so my knowledge of of wrestlers isn't as deep as yours. So like, um, <laughs> mine is not as deep as, as you think. Trust me, <laughs> you're good. Keep going. Uh, I want uh, Becky Lynch. Um, okay. Uh, we need a boss. Uh, Amber Moon. Okay, uh, so Becky Lynch, Sasha. Uh, Charlotte. Uh, Oscar, Moon. Yeah, I already got Oscar on there. Um, Shinsuke, Any... but I'm biased. Nakamura, okay. Uh, AJ. You've yet to name a celebrity, by the way. Fuck. Um, I'm trying to think of celebrities that are, like, why? I don't why? Know. Why? I don't like, know. pick a pick a celebrity. Like, who do you want to see? Get in a ring. Let's assume that you know they're they're actors, they're professionals, they can be trained how to do this stuff. So, where where's your head at? Um, uh, uh, Statham, Jason Statham. Statham, okay. I want to see Statham beat the shit out of somebody. Okay, right on. Um, Who else? Uh, Charlize Theron has been doing a lot of action movies. I want to see her in the ring. Okay, right on. I can get down with that. Um, what else we got? Oh, uh, Michelle Yeoh. She's a martial arts. She's got the martial arts training. Okay. Uh, uh, if we're going that route, maybe Jackie Chan. Uh, Jackie. Okay. Um, you think Jackie can take a suplex? Jackie can. Jackie can sell. Okay. No, I trust me. It, it, here's the thing. I I know Jackie is incredibly capable for his age at this point. I also know he is definitely getting up there in age. Right. So I worry about him long term and taking a real bump. Yeah. By the way, bump is a uh, term for when someone hits the canvas. Uh, or goes to the outside, or basically gets beaten in some sort of like prepared move. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so any others? I think the cast of Glow should be involved in some form because that's <laughs> the entire cast of Glow. Somehow, okay. because they're of of all the crossover pro- products from wrestling, like Glow has hit so many, like so many of our friends who are not into wrestling at all have talked about Glow. So, like, if their involvement would potentially bring in some more viewers to this thing okay um Come on. let's see oh rusev speaking okay. of people who can take a bump <laughs> um do do we want like a an do we want like a stone cold uh stone cold can't wrestle anymore fuck because that glass when that glass shatters i i'm, I'm not arguing that it can't wrestle anymore <clears throat> that pop is fucking <sighs> <laughs> so like, you got a ton of wrestlers you've got Statham, Thurum, Michelle Yeoh, Jackie Chan the glow cast, Rusev so you're not going with a Dwayne The Rock Johnson shit. no interest I guess we need, I, we should probably have Wayne in there Dwayne in there Okay. Dwayne okay, and Batista uh, do we okay, Batista yeah, cause he's, he gets the Marvel draw okay who else? Who else? Are there are there people you would add or take off? Um, take off. I'm not necessarily ready to do just yet. I'd like to add. Um, maybe go with a bit of a spectacle. Maybe we do like a uh, a Hathor Bjorsen, the guy who plays the Mountain on Game of Thrones. Oh, dude, yes, that guy is fucking legit. He could take um, a bump. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Trying to think of like. Other guys, I honestly, I would love to actually see like a triple threat where uh, we get uh, Vin Diesel, uh, Dwayne, and Statham to actually throw down and we do a Fast and Furious fight. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Well, three tickets are already sold. You, me, okay. and Dan. I mean, All right. we're already right. there. So that, that's already it. So, um, I, and uh, I, yeah, I don't know. All right. So let's let's take this and let's see if we come up with any names. Okay, so. Um, we've got a tag team match pretty much set up here. Um, we can have it be a ton of people, but basically I think uh, Adrenaline Rush is in no matter what because, fuck it, it's our show. We'll book who we want. Um, so who do you want them to take on? Um, Young Bucks or New Day? Ooh. Could we 
Are we going to have more than one tag? Uh, you've only got uh, three tag teams right now. We've got eight matches. So if you want to do two tag team matches, we're going to have to come up with uh, someone else. So I would probably say best thing – like if I were in your shoes – uh, and I were doing this, I'd probably put Adrenaline Rush and um, New Day in a uh, some sort of ladder match. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, let them kind of go sky high, let Keith and Kofi kind of play around a little bit, let Danger Dan and uh, and Big E kind of square off with each other, a little feat of strength action, um, have ourselves a traditional style ladder match, hang some imaginary titles or yeah, yeah. just a giant duffel bag full of cash above the <laughs> ring. And, and just watch Keith jump all over the place. Uh, yeah, and just let him go banana pants. All right, so um, are you comfortable with that? I like that. I was, I was right. wondering if you would want to do a triple threat, but those always get messy when you have – like I, three tags in there. Yeah, I think we actually do a spot with uh with young bucks. They come out, they make an appearance, and they super kick two people who suck. Um, maybe we actually get the the the, the tie in with that, and uh, they super kick Mark Marin and the guy who plays Bash on Glow. Oh my God, yeah, that'd be funny as shit. So okay, so <laughs> Era versus New Day. That is going to be a ladder match. That is our starter. That's a killer starter, dude. Dude, if you're gonna do it, come yeah. out strong. Yeah, that, that that's all. Fight 101, man. Kill them right out of the gate. That begs the question: Are we doing gimmick matches? Like, are we having cages and hardcores? And you, you let it you let it come as it as it will. I've seen New Day do something really do some amazing stuff. I've seen Keith fly both in video and on person. I want to add ladders into that. I want it to get a little crazy. Okay. All right. That's a so, great opener. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Um. So I'm gonna cross the two of them off the list. Um, I'm going to put, let's say, in between match four and five, I'm going to write up here uh, Bucks versus Glow. And we're going to mark them off in a just one-off throw through, through in there. Okay, so we've got that happening. All right, um, second match. Uh, we need something kind of solid. So what are you thinking? Which, which, you know, where would you go next? Um, so... Pick somebody. Just just pick a name. First name comes ahead. Suzuki and somebody. Okay, so we've got the grizzled old badass of of Suzuki, right? Mm-hmm. Who would you want to see him take on? A a a younger guy who can help carry him through? Do you want to have him take on somebody of real prominence and drag them through a incredibly difficult match? Do you want to see him? Square off against you know uh, someone else who who is Asian. Are you looking like where's your head? Like I, I, I don't necessarily want to see him and Jackie Chan throw down. I right. think it's a little too stereotypical. No, um, I, I, I I want him to like I I want that if there's gonna be blood, I want that to be the blood match where they're him and someone else just killing the shit out of each other. But, uh, like a then, raid match, like people just okay. elbowing and shit. Okay, and then I would maybe think uh, Suzuki and AJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be awesome. Okay, all right. So Suzuki, and then AJ Styles. All right, match three. Who do you want? Uh, Pick a name. I think a, a ladies match. So Asuka. Okay. See, the problem is, like, all the women that we picked are from the WWE, and I don't know, um, I don't know enough of the other promotions to get uh, other women in there. I would maybe say Viper Niven, who was on the, uh, uh, whatever it is, the big tournament that they had. Uh, she goes by the, what is she, the Megaton Barbie? Oh, okay. uh, is basically how she goes. Um, she's wrestling a lot in Japan. She's doing a lot of stuff. It's not necessarily a draw, but I think, honestly, Jamie, at this point now, you let someone like Charlize be the draw for this. Um, I also find it really, uh, really telling that neither one of us wanted, uh, or even like went out of our way to put Ronda on that list. <laughs> I'd be curious to have Ronda on that list. Um, do you actually want to do the the four horsewomen versus four horsewomen? Ooh. Ronda and her whole crew versus. Uh, what do we have? Sasha, Becky, Bailey, and Charlotte. Yes. And we actually do four horsewomen versus four horsewomen. Yeah, let's do that because that's yeah. gonna bring that's gonna bring the Smarks, and that's gonna bring in the MMA crew. Um, okay. And I it, it, that gimmick just sells itself. And that's a good okay. that's a good three that's a good number three. 
Okay, right on. So I'm going to crash off Becky and Sasha. Okay, so we've got a couple of those. Um, let's get into number four. Who else do you want? Uh, let's see. I think we load up the first half with a lot of wrestling. So um, Rusev on, and somebody. Rusev and somebody. Okay. Uh, all right, so Rusev, big shitty dude, like – Thick motherfucker. Um, I'm thinking we need it needs to look like a car crash happening in here. Um, I don't think it needs to be one on one. I'd maybe throw a few bodies at this, possibly throw in some sort of like chamber or something. Um, I think there needs to be some sort of containing of these guys, maybe even hell in a cell. Rusev in the mountain. Uh, godly. Um, let's throw some, let's throw two other bodies in there. Why don't we just let's uh, let's see, Rusev. Rusev v. Mountain. Batista. I was thinking uh, versus Batista. Yeah. Ruin the Batista. Yeah, Batista. Yeah, let's go with that. Rusev v. Mountain versus Batista. Triple Fet Hell in a Cell. <laughs> God, the spots of just like the three of them just bucking at each other. and I just, The idea <clears throat> of the cage and being involved in that, them throwing it at each other. Yeah. Hell, if one of them actually Rusev decides to start off like the old uh, you know Mick Foley Undertaker match and start on top of the cage yeah forcing Mountain to climb there should be a keg in the middle of the ring yeah yeah just absolutely it's we'll call it a a kegger a kegger match a <laughs> hell in the hell in the a kegger in the cell match or some shit like that strong man in the cell strong man in the cell that All would right, that so- would be fucking great all right, so after that triple threat, it's time to lighten things up a little bit. We have our Bucks versus Glow spot uh, going all through there. Um, get into number five. We're off of the fun moment. I think it's time to liven up things a little bit. Maybe we have ourselves a bit of a celebrity match going on here. Let me cross off Rusev here, cross off the mountain here on our list and our Batista. So we could – we've already done a triple threat match previously i don't think you wanted to book two triple threat matches one after the other Mm -mm. um so if you did actually want to do our fast and furious fight uh we should probably hold that off at least for one more match yeah so would you maybe want to do uh another women's match or would you want them a little further down the car we're match number five right now number five okay five five of eight five of eight so yeah um let's get Let's get Charlize uh, Theron involved. Okay. Let's get Michelle Yeoh involved somehow. Okay. Or, or do we split them up? Do we always put a celebrity with a wrestler? Well, I mean, that would be the question is how would you want to break that up? Because we've we've still got – we've got Asuka. We've got Charlize Theron. We've got Michelle Yeoh. And then we've got Ember Moon. So we could potentially just do a tag match. I'd love to have some sort of stipulation in there to make it a little more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not a hundred percent sure how you how you book that properly. Um, maybe we actually have them vie for uh, I don't know. Pick a pick a, a movie chain or something like that, that. They haven't made yet. Give me something. Uh, oh shit. Pick anything. No. Like a like a, a spot in the movie or like a. Actually, role? you know what? Why don't we do this? We'll do charity. We'll do a charity thing. Okay. Winner winner of the match. Gets a I don't know hundred thousand dollar check uh, donated to their charity. Add a little stipulation here. We'll do a tag team match. Um, do you do you want to put? Uh, how do you want to tie tie them up? I think we put <laughs> Charlize and Asuka versus Michelle and Ember Moon. <laughs> okay. And the entire time, like calling up, they've been talking shit at each other the entire time. Okay, so Charlie's and Asuka versus Yo and Moon. Okay, so four hundred thousand uh, dollar match. All right, number six. Number six. Let's see. We still got on your list here uh, Omega, Cody, um, Nakamura. Jackie Chan, The Rock, and Vin Diesel, and Jason Statham. Oh wow! Okay. Well, the I think we should put the uh, um, the Fast and Furious match at number seven. Okay. All right. So, so you don't actually want that headlining. Ooh. Because the question is, what's your what's your main event of the evening? Because 
I find it really hard to believe that you wouldn't put Dwayne in the main event. Now, I'm not saying that that match is main event worthy. <laughs> having, having Vin and, like, Dwayne throw down would be great. I think the only thing that would really make that work properly is if you actually make it a movie set street fight. Yeah, you build, like, a fake set and have them just fuck around in it. You yeah. Bring out those two uh, <laughs> those wrenches and have, like, a wrench fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm sold. That'll be the headliner. Okay, so main event. So main event is The Rock versus Vin versus Statham. Movie set street fight. So seven should probably be like a a solid wrestling match, I feel. Well, you've got two more matches to book. I'm scratching off names right now. So you have right now two matches left. We can always add names, but you had on your wish list Omega, Cody, Nakamura, and Jackie Chan. Omega and Knox for number seven. Okay. And then Cody and Jackie for number six. I really want to make Jackie Chan like a special guest referee or something like that. I'm really I'm worried about him. Jackie. You're worried about okay. How I'm, about... I'm worried about him keeping up. Like I just make and and I'm probably wrong about this. Co- Cody and uh, Cody and Tony Jaw. Okay. Cody v Tony Jaw with Jackie Chan as a special ref. Jackie Chan special ref. And in between, we have the the cast of Glow as the ring announcers. Uh, maybe we get one of them to be a ju- like a, a special ref or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we could have them basically just doing backseat segments all night long with the wrestlers, with the entrances, with this and that, doing commentary, doing this. Yeah, we can have them involved through the whole thing. Yeah. Fuck, I want to see this now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fast and right. Furious because the Fast and Furious match works because they have real heat. They right they have they have real heat they have fake movie heat they all are trained Dwayne is especially trained we can push it through and I think adding the the movie set aspect of the street fight and when I say movie set street fight I mean we could actually have it in the ring and just have it basically be a hardcore match and just bring a ton of stuff down yeah but I really want to see them throwing each other through walls yeah oh yeah so I think it needs to be some sort of like set up in the back or something like it, it's got to be a whole thing yeah oh man all right so so run it down one last time so we get the whole evening all right kick it off we have a ladder match uh, for our title or whatever it would be for tag teams we have Northeast Wrestling Zone Adrenaline Rush taking on the New Day Danger Zone uh, match number two to follow up Suzuki versus AJ Styles maybe throwing down outside yeah. uh, if you haven't seen that match with Suzuki outside you need to fucking watch that the concrete outside parking lot match yes uh, match number three, we have the showdown of the four horsewomen, as in Ronda Rousey, uh, Shayna Baszler, and I cannot remember the other two because I'm a terrible person, versus the WWE version of the four horsewomen. We have Becky Lynch, we have Bailey, we have Sasha Banks, and we have Charlotte. God, they make so much money on that fucking thing. Yep. Yeah, and honestly, I think that could probably be further down in the card, but that that's fine. Yeah. Um, following up with that after that barn burner ass match, and I really do think we should actually switch out uh, number five and number three. I think the the uh, yeah, I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. Um, so at number four, we have a hell in the cell match between Rusev, the Mountain, Hapthor Bjorsen, and Dave Batista. Oh God, so good! All the movie yes. strongmen. All the movie strong red, yes. Uh, as I said, the the switch out, or sorry, in between uh, the Hell in the Cell match after the recovery of all of that, having the cage being raised up into the ceiling, we have a backstage segment with the Young Bucks meeting the cast of Glow, uh, basically super kicking the shit out of Mark Marin and the guy who plays Bash. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Glow cast, by the way, running all over, running roughhouse around the back, doing all sorts of fun stuff, having a great time all night with the tie-in happening there. Mm-hmm. Uh, match number five, which again I say should be moved to number three. Instead, we have the tag team match. The winner of the match getting $100,000 to the charity of their choice. 
we have the team of Charlize Theron and Asuka versus Michelle Yeoh and Ember Moon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number six, we have Cody Rhodes versus Tony Ja with special guest referee Jackie Chan. <laughs> so good. At number seven, which I dare say is almost a cool-off match by comparison, and you know it won't be, we have Kenny Omega taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Ah, that's going to be... I feel like that needs some sort of stipulation. I, I don't know why. I don't necessarily want it to be... Like, I don't know if it needs to be something ridiculous, because I don't want to lose the air the aerial spots. Mm -hmm. But I'd almost love to see them, like... Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I know he's already got a special guest referee with Jackie Chan, I'd love to see that Cody Rhodes versus Tony Jaa match be a strap match. Oh, you actually yes. strap them the fuck together. They have to actually throw down and close things. And then we get like halfway through the match. Tony Jaa decides he's done with this, stomps on Cody Rhodes' hand, breaks the leather strap like a fucking badass. Oh, that would be great. And then you get the flippy doos, the close in flippy doos. Yeah. Poor Cody. Anyway. What about um, the, the, um, the, let's see. The Omega yeah, Shinsuke the could Omega be, Shinsuke match. Could I, be I like a like, no holds barred or something. No DQ. I, no DQ. I mean, what's the what's to actually do a no DQ? Here's the thing. If I've learned anything lately about no DQ matches in Shinsuke, it just means he's going to punch him in the dick. Okay. And I don't want it to end prematurely. Right. We, I, I don't know if it needs to be something. I don't know what it needs to be. We set him up in an amusement park. It, 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 there's maybe something... <laughs> Something weird. You know what? Actually, fuck it. Let's get a real tie and we'll get the kids involved. We'll set that match up on the back lot and they fight in the new set of Double Dare. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. They actually, the match starts, they start to throw down, they go, you know, through the slide, through the teeth, grab the flag, <laughs> and then they win this! That would be so great. Yes. Yeah. A bunch of ridiculous shit to throw at each other, tons of spots, way too many knees, way too many knees from both of them. Um, all right, and then the main event in our movie set street fight, we have Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus Vin Diesel versus Jason Statham for Fast and Furious superiority. Oh my god, that would be so good! It would be even better if like the movie ties into the to, into well, our wrestling I, show. I think realistically, you have to do some some like really interesting shit. Like Vin Diesel has to come down. Like Shawn Michaels when he was taking on the Undertaker in like the mid two thousands, where he has like the the one up to to, to Paul Walker, you know he yeah, he thinks yeah. got himself all in white. He points up to Paul. That's where he gets a string throw or whatever it is. Dwayne and Statham do a straight heel turn. They take Vin out because he's out of the next upcoming movie where he, where they go against each other. Yeah, and then we actually get a whole fight between between Statham and Dwayne, and then Vin comes back at the end, and then I, I assume you have to have Vin win this thing. You, you have to, because he's doing it for his family, which right. includes Paul Walker, and, and you, right. he's got he's to gotta come out on top. Right. I, I also would love to see the rest of the cast getting involved. I know it seems like a bit of an expense to get Gal, D Gal Gadot to come in oh, for yeah. just a throwaway spot, but come on. You need her in Jay there. Gucci. What if we find out that he gets special help from someone else we didn't know was still around. A masked man comes out, clubs Dwayne in the back of the head to help him get the win, and holding up his hand, he pulls off the mask, and Hans back! Hans is back! <gasps> oh my god. I'm there. Now this needs to happen, and we don't have enough money to make any of this happen, but this no, needs to happen. No, 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 I don't, no, I, no, but... Fuck it. Let's let's do it anyway. All right. We we can start like a GoFundMe or something like that. That's how that works, right? Yeah. yeah. I I like it. I would watch yeah. this. And yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not unbiased when I say that, but I would I would watch this. <laughs> Considering you came up with most of the roster, yeah, there's no way you could be biased. <laughs> um, we don't have any flippy doos. We don't have any lucha. Is that a problem? What are you talking about we got we got adrenaline rush. Well, that's true. And and we have Omega and Nakamura. They do flippy doos. And Co we have fucking Tony Ja. Oh right. Okay. We we got the flippies. We got our flippies. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I'm I'm sorry that we don't have any luchadors. I'd love to have some luchadors. I'm sure uh, if I end up getting uh, having this watch by uh, Chris off from the Rough House, he's gonna yell at me for not having anyone from Lucha Underground on there. I'm sorry. I don't uh, I don't know the roster, so hey, it's it's my fault. Problem. So that's, that's it right yeah. there. So. Yep. If you're angry, blame Jamie Noguchi. 
All right. Well, um, I think that's going to do it. This was an, this was super fun. I don't know if anyone else gives a shit about this. Stuff, up, that's all right. But that's what this whole I, podcast is about. We're having yep. fun. I think, yep. we, I we think managed that, to out through a wrestling card in, I don't even know what the count is, but I feel like we managed to work our way through that in about 20 minutes. So what the fuck WWE's problem is, I have no idea. Yeah. And I, I think there would be a lot of money on this card. So Yep. Even paying everybody top rate, I think there's going to be a lot of money in this card. So. Yep. WWE, for the record, I am available. Uh, <laughs> I will gladly work for you. And uh, to my understanding, it won't be a long tenure, but I'm still down to work for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. Um, big shout out to Greg Larson um, yes. for helping me figure out the email stuff. Um, if you tried to email us within the, the past week, it did not work. Um, so Greg kind of helped me get the information I needed to get to Libsyn to get that all hooked up. So now our, our email will work. It's info at fucking do it cast dot com. Uh, okay. e- email us uh, other matches that we missed, other people that we should have put on our uh, our bookings or just, you know, yep. other ideas that you want us to workshop. Uh, yep. b- Brandon, where can they find you? Uh, Palmer Brennan on Instagram, uh, at Brandon Chalmers on Twitter. If you want to get my attention and start yelling at me about my wrestling choices, uh, Carlos, I wait to hear from you. Um, so <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and, uh, next week I promise no wrestling. So please come back. Right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at angry Zen master. Um, uh, and, uh, on Facebook at under my name, Instagram under my name, uh, yeah. just type in my name. You'll find my shit. I'll, I'll yep. be around stuff. I'm, I'm the same way, Jamie Noguchi. You and I share that. We put our name on it. Bad yeah. ideas, good ideas. Put your name on it. Yeah. All right. And uh, until next time, thanks for uh, watching, listening, subscribe, all that kind of shit. I don't know how to end these, so fuck it. Later. <laughs> <laughs>